Hello, Pod Smashers of the Internet, and welcome to another episode of 80 Bit Pod Smash! 80 Bit Pod Smash! When you're living, living in a dream. In dream. <laughs> <laughs> Where gaming goes to grab a beer. That's our new tagline when you're living in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> we are your hosts, Penguin and Termite. I am Penguin. I am Termite, and we are a weekly video game podcast smashing together ideas that you care about with video games. That's right, and tonight, you might have guessed, we're talking about Lego, which is a thing that existed even before the Lego movie, believe it or not, kids. Like, 90% of our audience are people our age, so all of you know what Legos are, but we'll talk more about Legos and what they have to do with video games in a little bit, but first, we are where gaming goes to grab a beer, and so what are we drinking tonight? I'm actually drinking a bourbon, in case you didn't know by the bloop noise that it made when I decorked it. I am drinking Isaac Bowman's Straight Bourbon Whiskey Finished in Port Barrels. Uh, it is one of the legendary bourbons coming out of Fredericksburg. It won some crazy award. The Bowman Distillery produces a random experimental batch every couple of times. They call it the uh, Abraham. And they decided that this one won so many awards and it was so good that they turned it into a staple. And so they they publish it, publish it. They distribute it everywhere, yeah. and including here in, in, in our area. So uh, it's the port nice. barrel finished bourbon. Don't let the port barrel finished scare you away. It is you've absolutely told us about it. Yeah, I think yeah. you've mentioned it before, and I'm, and I'm when intrigued. You, I really want to so go. Good. I live in freaking Fredericksburg, and I've never been Smith Bowman Distillery. It's but real free. quick question, because yeah. it like binged my brain, you know, ADHD, the ideas like pinball that are completely unrelated. Uh-huh. Is our mutual friend charlie bowman related to the bowman distillery people maybe like up the family tree somewhere but not i have to now know this i'm going yeah, you should charlie ask if you're listening you should text me right now i've probably already asked you about it though by this point because it's like two weeks later <laughs> right <laughs> or barrel <laughs> yeah, finish but, sounds good yes it's the it's called isaac bowman but it's just a straight bourbon barrel or a straight bourbon whiskey finished in the port barrels the tour is free if you're in the Fredericksburg area you can just go and like walk in you don't have to make an appointment you don't have to buy tickets you just do it and they put you on the next 15 minute block so you get to hang out in the store and smell the delicious bourbon and then when you walk in like the very first room into the barrel room area they you can see the port barrels like what was wine drained and filled with bourbon and now are aging and it smells unlike any amazing thing I, it's the most amazing smell in the world it's awesome so just that alone like i want to go take another tour just to go stand in that room and it tastes just like it smells my beer is this tumbly from center of the universe also a and not uh, ashland it's an ashland local brewery um, not quite Fredericksburg, but we're both drinking locally sourced products. It's kind of cool today. It's Tropical Lager. They made it for a partnership with King's Dominion. And it is like, mm-hmm. if you ever go to King's Dominion, you need to get find where this thing is and get where they sell it there. And it's worth the like probably $11 upcharge. But I got it for $11. I got a four pack. And this thing has been <laughs> fantastic. It's hard to sometimes I have like beer in my fridge that I'm like, this is podcast beer and I'm not supposed to touch it because I need to save it for the podcast because I'm not made of money and can't just like buy beer all the time. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, this was one that was hard to resist, not just being like, I want to drink that right now. So I'm drinking it now. Yeah, I'm getting it. So, Mm, uh, all right. Anything you want to chat about before we jump into our Sega months? It is summertime ish. It's like spring. Finally, it's warm outside. It's wonderful. I like sat outside today and, if almost it almost felt like summer I suppose in sun, Virginia like, it's yeah. effectively it's summer yeah because we don't have mm-hmm. spring it's just it goes right from winter to summer yeah and the the always every single time it gets warm in the springtime I always have these nostalgic hooks back to video games that I've experienced in like the springtime because there's always a big release window as we're experiencing now that we've been talking about on the show how like we're three four games deep in that are all new Elden yeah. Ring Horizon Forbidden West Wonderlands and I have Gran Turismo 7 as well. So, like, I'm packed. And Lego Star Wars, <laughs> yeah. speaking of Lego, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. That's why we're recording why this we're episode just dropped. Yep. And, like, that's out. I don't have it yet, but I, like, want to play it. But I have all these fond memories of games that come out in the spring. And so I always want to play, like, a Grand Theft Auto game because both 4 and 5 came out in, like, the fall or the spring time frame. Or at least I experienced yeah, them spring then. spring is now basically, like, new fall as far as video game releases are going. Like, the last... Mm-hmm at least like half a decade it's 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 a trend that's not going away now so from now on it's just like springtime 
game time <laughs> yeah and uh, i used to work in a mall like a shopping mall and there was this place called gamepad where you could go and rent hours and play on consoles and that's where i experienced like the ghostbusters game that came out on 360 and ps3 and borderlands and some other shooters had come out around that time but like springtime i remember many moments of there with friends like even though left for dead it was a very fall cold game we, we played left for dead around the springtime co-op ryan in front of the show was there and we played like super mario bros we when it first came out over there and I don't know, it just a lot of memories, a lot of fun, like windows open playing games, even though it's nice out, you would think I would be more nostalgic about being outside, but no, like <laughs> we're a gaming podcast. So I'm gonna talk about yeah. that. So I'm just well, getting dude, those vibes. I, like, I just want to play games. It's a lot. I've had a lot of nostalgia recently too. It's not necessarily due to the springtime. Spring is like my least favorite season. And I know some people hate spring because of allergies. I don't really have, I do get a tiny bit of allergies, but it's not going to be till later in the spring. I don't I just don't like the spring colors, the like pastels that people typically wear in the spring. It's just not my thing. I don't like summer either anymore. I think it's just like the cold months. I used to love summer because my birthday was in the summer and, you know, we we're out of school. But now I just hate summer because it's like a, it's like a it's like living in a bowl of tomato soup, especially if you live mm. in Virginia is basically what summer is. Yep. That's it. There are some things I like about summer. Don't get me wrong. But for the most part, yeah. But I think I like spring even less. Anyways, complete digression. <laughs> I've okay. been nostalgic because I've been playing Death's Door is kind of a game I snagged on the last day of like a PS Plus sale they had right before the new spring sale. Mm-hmm. And it's a game that came out the last year, 2021, this year. I don't remember when it came out, uh, admittedly, but it is kind of like a Souls-like, Zelda-like, but it doesn't have as aggressive of features like souls like features as other like the souls games right it's kind of it's it's got challenging combat but for the most part like you don't lose anything when you die so it's just like you pick right back off where you left off and you kill it's more like metroid dread in that regard i think Mm -hmm. but it's like top down isometric style like dungeon crawler and uh, you play as a little raven but i swear he looks just like a penguin so it's like a perfect game for me in that regard but dude the music the game is good but the music is incredible it's so good and somehow they both make good original music that is its own thing and yet Mm -hmm. still they have little trills and bits that have remind me of so many other games like i've heard little bits that remind me of zelda i've heard little bits that remind me of uh of even like little borderlandsy like certain parts of borderlands when they get more like like spacey with the Mm -hmm. music like in um uh, what do you call it uh pre-sequel yeah i was getting bits i was like this is like pre-sequel and there's some songs too that i'm like i don't know why this makes me nostalgic but it's making me this or what it's making me nostalgic for but i feel that sense of like general nostalgia right where it's just like this feels like great video game music and it's reminding me of like good times i had playing great video games even if i can't yeah. think of a specific game it's so mm-hmm. good i highly recommend death store it's like 20 bucks retail yep i, I would wait till for a sale i got it for like 13 which was an acceptable price for me um but it's definitely it's a nice like 20 hour platinum i'm on the last trophy you have to play through the entire game using only the umbrella mm-hmm. with a tro- for a trophy that's called the Academy of Umbrellas, um, aptly nice. named. And I, uh, your option was you can do it all in one playthrough if you use the umbrella, but they were like, we highly recommend just doing it in a separate playthrough because it doesn't take that long, but mm-hmm. it is objectively harder. Like, I didn't realize how much I relied on the melee attack to get through the game, but you literally have to, uh, like, never, ever even, if you even swing another weapon, you're like, you lose that trophy. You have to like go run straight to the umbrella, which there's no enemies in the way, but like you could accidentally just like swing your sword in the like area, the starting area. Mm -hmm. Either way, you have to literally go grab it and then play the entire game with the, the gimpy umbrella. And yeah, it's I'm on a boss right now that was just kicking my butt last night and I was ticked off, but either way, great game, still fun, pretty easy platinum, all things considered, Mm -hmm. especially if you've platinum Elden ring, which you did. And did yeah, I highly recommend it's, uh, published Put it on your short list by Devolver Digital. Devolver, it was developed yeah, by... dude, they do some mm-hmm. good stuff. They do. It was developed by Acid Nerve, and they this is the only game that they've made, and it came out in placed on PlayStation in November of 2021. Yeah, it's it's also on Switch. So if you're not you don't care about trophies, mm-hmm. I actually thought of our friend Ryan. So Ryan, if you're listening to this, I've been meaning to tell you. I've been talking to you pretty much relentlessly about D and D, but I've been also meaning to tell you this game features a character that makes you soup and then tells you secrets while you're eating the soup and he's a per- he's a person but not really he's a, just a the, he's got like wears like a yellow rain jacket and it's basically a corpse of a person who's being manipulated by a squid on his back 
and the squid makes all these jokes that he's like, I hope you enjoy this meal made by my totally mammalian hands. <laughs> it's just like, I am a mammal, fellow mammal, fellow warm-blooded creature. <laughs> it's great. It's really funny. <laughs> so I thought Ryan would appreciate that. So, nice. Anyways, Death Door, it's great stuff. I, I, yeah, it looks I, awesome. Maybe that's my favorite thing. I don't know. but So maybe I can just skip. Well, I do have a favorite thing I'd like to talk about. Sure, that's fine. It we'll do favorite thing. go pretty quick. But anyway, this game looks, I'm looking at gameplay footage, and it looks like Bastion. If you've played or heard of Bastion from I played Super it, Giant I've, Games, I've been meaning to, yeah, I've been meaning mm-hmm. to fire it up. Yep, because I Bastion's enjoyed. What did I enjoy cool. of theirs? Oh, Hades. Oh, yeah, it felt, it felt yep. like Hades to me. Yeah, but it's got Very like the similar. Zelda. It's got the Zelda hook of like, you know, go to a dungeon, see all these puzzles you can't solve, get the item that helps you solve oh, the puzzle. Oh, nice. It's got all that. Yeah, all That's that pretty cool Zelda like feel to it. So, yeah. All right. Well, I guess I had just talked about something that is kind of my favorite thing for the week. May end up just being. A cop out answer for me, but 80 bit pods matches our favorite thing. 80 bit pods matches our favorite thing. Favorite thing. It's a little segment of our show where we talk about something that we are digging this week. It could be adjacent to our topic or not. It could be deep or shallow in meaning and something like a good cookie or a meaningful experience with your son. And I'm going to lean into the latter with mine. And on Friday was the end of my son's spring break from his elementary school. And it was also the release day of Sonic 2 in theaters, which he has been dying to see and has been mm-hmm. talking about Sonic the Hedgehog mm-hmm. for like weeks leading up to this. I was very excited. I took him with the same like attitude of I I saw Aladdin in theaters when I was six years old. And it was like the earliest movie experience I have. Like if I, I cannot remember movie experience prior to that, like in my memory. So I'm like, this is now the chance I could actually cement a memory in my son's life forever about movie theaters. And so I took him to see Sonic 2. It was absolutely amazing. That movie's incredible. There's a small, like, a side time, uh, a side story plot line in the movie that just it doesn't belong. I don't really care. It's about humans and its <laughs> existence doesn't Stupid ruin the humans. whole thing. Yeah. They're like, it, this was completely unnecessary and just dumb. It didn't need to be there. That's my critique. Other than that, awesome video game movie. Uh, you realize you that's like, there for the people who don't have a pre-existing relationship with the video game, probably, so that yeah. they can try to yeah. identify with the movie. Yeah, okay. yeah, maybe. That's yeah, why. Sure. That's, I'm, I'm just explaining. That's why it's there. Like that's. Yeah. I, I love James Marsters, but I agree. It's like his plot's like okay. <laughs> mm. Have you seen it? I mean, I no, I've I've seen the first one. I want to see the second one. I hear it's got it's got lots of buzz right now. People are just like hyped on that movie. Yeah, and it's, it's like awesome. crushing it at the box office. So yeah. Yep. Here, Jeff Fowler, by the way, was asked, I think at like Comic Con or something, if he would do a Smash Bros. movie, and he said he would love to. He's mm-hmm. like, obviously, we have an insane amount of legal hurdles to get, yeah, over. But Tons. he is like, that's a dream for him. I'm like, yes, yeah, make it happen, Nintendo, please. He's proven himself. He's done it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I feel like Sonic is that at least the maybe not the first Sonic movie, but I feel like this fr- movie franchise may be that kind of Iron Man moment we've been looking for. Well, I think it like was Detective they, Pikachu. Doing it right. Really? You think it was Detective yeah. Pikachu? Yeah, Detective Pikachu I, was awesome. And it was like, okay, we can do video game movies, like adaptations. <laughs> sure. Uh, so and, like the, if, yeah. if, if Detective Pikachu is the Iron Man, then this is like the the um, Captain America, the first, the first yeah, maybe. Avenger, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so that still that doesn't change the fact. Ryan Reynolds is Pikachu. Ben right. Schwartz says, um, as Sonic, Chris Pratt is Mario, and then... Yeah. Fill in the rest with everybody else. But the big one is you cast the master hand as played by Robert Downey Jr. What? Awesome. (laughs) Robert Downey Jr. playing the master hand? That'd be sweet. (laughs) That would be pretty Uh, awesome. And I'm here for it. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Yeah. um, So uh, Jeff Fowler, if you want to hire me as the ideas man, um, we can we can make Smash Bros. I can't promise you any legal help, but I can. Promise and you, you be should awesome. be referencing Ben Schwartz and going money, please, money, please. Yeah, that's all I want is money. please. Yeah. Here, money there's for a great, ideas. great Parks and Rec reference in Sonic 2 because Ben Schwartz and he does one of his oh, lines. Nice. It's awesome. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. There's a lot of Easter all eggs right. in that. But yeah. I've, yeah, I've heard. I've heard there's a lot of Sonic 2 Easter eggs as well. My son loved it. We, he's been talking that's about cool. it, ranting. We had popcorn. I bought him candy. It was awesome. The whole experience. He sat through the whole thing. I like did the whole like go potty first. We're not going pee during the movie. We got to be quiet. It was just a whole different experience, like teaching a six year old how to be in a movie theater around you, like other people. And it's it was awesome. Everything went smoothly. It, he loved it. It was his like hoorah for the the end of the spring break that he had. So 
that's my favorite thing. Sweet. My, I guess, oh, so my favorite thing is I am officially running a and d campaign uh, or starting to, as a DM, get my toes wet. So I'm in the middle of research and paperwork and familiarizing myself with the rules and constantly Googling stuff. Uh, at some point, I will, of course, sit down and read like the player's handbook or whatever. I'm also watching a video series by a guy named Matt Coville. I'm just trying to put the work in because I think that I love the idea of DMing. I love this, the storytelling aspect is going to be no problem for me. It's the it's the making sure the rules like I have all the rules and keeping track of all of the like complexity of the game. That's what I'm more worried about. Anyways, so I'm bravely venturing into that world. Anyways, I've I've been doing a whole bunch of stuff. Some of it 100% necessary, like character sheet building. Some of it wholly unnecessary and just meant to try to make the people who are putting up with me have a better experience when we actually sit down to play. And in an effort to do that, I have been experimenting with a bunch of different like online free character creators, like appearance yeah. creators. Mm -hmm. uh, and I found a bunch and I love them all for different reasons. But the four that I've been pulling from are uh, the ones I showed you. Did I show? I don't know if I've showed them. Yeah, you yet. sent I'm me a bunch. You after this. Did I? You did. So there's yeah. one that is an 8-bit character creator. And that yes. one is awesome, but it sucks in one regard. And that's it's got a lot of cool assets that are locked behind paywalls. But it's so cool. You create little 8-bit characters and you can and then it was designed for D&D, &D, so you can do tieflings, you can do gnomes, you can do high elves, half elves, all of them, celestials, all the races are like available to make it in little 8-bit character forms. It very it, it like allows you to do all the races, but it limits you in like equipment, like how much you can equip your with the characters with. So I had to be a little creative, but you can change the color of the equipment so you could have two people wearing like similar gear and it looked different enough. Either way, I uh, enjoyed making 8-bit characters on the far flip side of the spectrum. I enjoyed making like full 3D miniature models, right? Because there's a site out there called Hero Forge. I should probably say the names of these things since they're my favorite things. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> Pixel one's called Reroll. It's available online. You can just Google Reroll D&D character creator. Hero Forge is kind of the uh, character creator du jour because it's designed, they make their money by selling miniatures. So you're actually designing a miniature. But there's nothing that's stopping you from like taking a screenshot of the miniature and using that as a character image. Uh, so that's what I've been doing. I've been making everybody little miniatures, and that's been fun. And then there's two more I found. One is just like a cute C1. It's called. It's actually called a dress up game, and it's so it feels. It's actually a Japanese website, and I don't recall it off the top of my head. But you have to use Google Translate to even like understand what you're doing on the site. It's oh, hilarious. Wow. Yeah. But you make these cutesy little like anime versions of your characters. It's it's hilarious. It's fun because it's like it's 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 that weird mix of like it's it's like both like nauseatingly cute, like the kind of cute where you're like, ugh, blah, but also kind of <laughs> hilarious at the same time because it's just like it's a tiefling and he's flicking you off and he's like anime style. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then finally, the uh, the last one I used is called Art Breeder, and this one's weird. I actually did the did, did yours today on this one, and it's. Not exactly what I wanted, but it's also kind of cool in its own way. But Art Breeder is basically you take, you go to the site and then you take images. They have like a whole library of images and you find two that you like or three that you like. And you literally it like uses AI technology to like blend them together. And it's not super Whoa. elegant. By that, I mean that you have to like mess with things and mess with the sliders to even get like a, like a decent, halfway decent image most of the time. Okay. But when it works, when it clicks, when it does kind of finally do what you want it to do, it creates some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, art, art pieces and they're really kind of cool looking so i'll show you the ones that i made um for for my uh you guys my party uh tonight as well but it's awesome so like check out those sites uh i'll see if i can find the the japanese one but if you are interested in even just like dicking uh if you're interested in just like uh, messing around and seeing like you know making characters perhaps you're you know writing your spare time or something and just want to like visualize the characters you make or you want to like workshop a character that you might want to make in a video game like those these are all great sites for different reasons and doing all that stuff so i'd highly recommend checking Sweet. them out yeah yeah cool. okay well that leads us to our last segment which is <laughs> DLC. dlc dlc is downloadable content it's a segment of our show where we have a little fun mini discussion that may or may not be related to our main topic it is a little extra bit of content a little extra conversation on the side conversation you wouldn't normally have about video games so in honor of talking about legos and in honor of legos star wars the skywalker saga coming out or having come out or whatever 
uh, we I wanted to ask reverse of what we're kind of talking about tonight, which is what are video games that, to your knowledge, don't have Lego sets that you think would make really good Lego sets? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. And I'm going to go. You ready? I have an answer right yeah, off go. the bat. Do it. Half-Life. <laughs> ha- Lego Half-Life would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The little head crabs and like the humor that they could mm. pull into like the very serious right, science-y click, atmosphere. Like, clicking the head crab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, funny. it'd be awesome. And the gravity gun and it would just be really cool. Yeah. I was thinking of like uh, uh, any of the From Software games. Again, they're on my mind, of course, always these days. But the re- I have a good reason. And that is because the monsters are usually so hideous that like, especially like think of um, think of like Godric the golden in um in elden ring like in all of his arms like form. thinking about like a lego set and like, <laughs> all the arms like <laughs> attaching just like more and more arms to him uh, i feel like yep. there's lots of monsters that you could do that with with a bunch of from software lego sets where you could like hook in a bunch of funny appendages to make these monstrosities and it would all fit all of it would fit <laughs> anything any horrible monstrosity you would make it'd be like yep that fits that's something that dark souls would have <laughs> nice yeah, yeah awesome well good that was a nice short one if you have any others that pop in your mind oh the gravity gun would be so fun with like lego building puzzles Uh it would be great it's perfect the more (laughs) i think about it the better half-life is yeah so are you thinking like a video game i mean like a lego set not just oh even that like that'd be awesome for any office space Uh at all like every like there's already so much half-life memorabilia and things out there that people like full-grown adults put in their very professional offices as like little if you know, you know, kind of things. So like yeah, you turn yeah, that into a Lego, which is also people do with like the, the more like, what do you call the Lego ideas where they're the it's more what, sophisticated it's like whatever sets the for nerd adults. version of virtue signaling is. It's like, Hey, look, I know what Legos are all about. Look, yeah. I've got a Lego set on my desk. You should come talk to me about my Lego set. Totally. I mean, but like, whatever, it's harmless. In that case, it's like harmless behavior. So I have no right. actual problem with it, but yeah. just calling it. If out. you know, you know, you know, that's it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, great. We want to hear your listeners' ideas for Lego, Lego, um, video games that would make great Lego sets. Like, there's a bunch. I mean, there's a bunch of obvious ones. Like, I feel like again, Smash Bros. Legos, just all the different IPs would be awesome. Um, yeah, but but yeah, that that was just one that popped in my head as I was saying it. But we want to hear your ideas and what those Lego sets would look like and what their like big expensive set piece would be and and how much time it would take to put together all of that. We want to hear all those thoughts and more. And Termite will share with you where you can share those thoughts if you have them. You can express your anger at Nintendo to us about why it's not a Lego Zelda set by going to 80bitpodsmash.com and telling us why the Lego Mario set worked so well. What's wrong with Zelda? Let us know. <laughs> Tell us what you think. What Lego sets do you want to exist oh, yeah, from video building games? Building Hyrule Castle? Or- oh, wow. Oh, oh, Temple awesome. of Time? Oh, yeah. There's so many good yep. ones. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Uh, so you can find links to all of our social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our podcast platforms. If you're coming by way of YouTube and you want to know how you can get us on your audio feed on your phone, there's links to Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts, as well as our third-party RSS feed. I'm sorry, it is an RSS feed link that you can throw into any third-party app of your choice. And and you can get 80-Bit Pod Smash every single week. Monday at midnight is when the episode's live. And we also are doing our monthly gameplay review stream we've done mm-hmm. march we did elden ring you can go to twitch.tv slash 80 bit smash you can find it there until it expires but the video has been uploaded to youtube for posterity so you can check it out there april's has yet to be determined we don't know what exactly doing, when I, I think, or yeah yeah uh, well, go for it yeah well so let's see this this episode's airing this episode's probably going to be airing the last week we have to do it so uh well, if, if we have not yet has then not then aired, aired, yes so either check out the live stream we did last wednesday uh or check out the one that we're doing this Wednesday, the twenty seventh. So yep. it'll either happen on the it either happened on the twentieth or will happen on the twenty seventh. So you can either go check it out or you can wait and check it out in a few days. Uh, I think I think I'm still leaning towards doing Horizon Forbidden West. I don't think I've uninstalled it. Ooh, no, I, I gotta I finish have. it. Yeah, you do. You do because we have to talk about it. Talk about the story. The spoilers. So yeah. Yeah, I yeah I've got I know I I know there's a bunch of content I skipped so I have plenty to do while to play and while talking about it so I think that should still be an engaging listen for the listeners so we can do that 
Yep, and, and it is a review yep. stream. It is a spoilery filled review stream, and the audio right. portion of that live feed will get spun off into our RSS feed through our audio links. So you could, don't have to bit, like consume it by video. So all of that, exactly. you can find yep. everything and all the information about all that. 80 bitpodsmashcom eight zero b i t podsmash.com. Huzzah! All right. Well, then let's talk about Legos, I guess. So we're talking about Lego games. It's sort of like a I hate using the term niche because these games like sell so like make a ton of money, right? Like so yes, these aren't they do. like unpopular games, but it's like a it's just kind of like a segment, uh just called a corner of the video game market that like is oft celebrated but not oft talked about, in my understanding. Like people don't have like good or bad things to say about Lego games. They're just they're Lego games and nobody hates on them. But like nobody's like giving them a game of the year either, right? So mm-hmm. I kind of was like, oh, you know what? I know you have played a lot of them and you've talked about yep. them on the podcast before. So I figured mm-hmm. Lego is an awesome thing and Lego Skywalker saga was coming out. So let's talk about Lego. And I love Lego grew up loving Lego, just never got into the games. So let's start with, um, well, but let's, you know, let's not take for granted that everybody in the audience is like from our country, right? Like at some point, maybe someone's listening to this from a country that, you know, didn't grow up with, legos or maybe just recently got legos got access to legos so let's talk about what they are uh and why they're awesome so what are legos why are they awesome? speaking of not being american a privately held company based in denmark created the lego yeah. group uh nice. and i don't know exactly when the to- 1949 looks like manufactured interlocking wow. toy bricks in the 40s yeah uh and that's it's just it's ballooned off into a massive franchise of kids toys of various sets since so like, we could go we could do an entire episode about just yeah. this but yeah uh, I mean, the Legos wooden are, version uh, of it came out in 1932 and then in 1934 mm-hmm. the company came to be called lego derived from the danish phrase leg got which means play well in 1947 awesome. yeah isn't it? yeah 1947 lego expanded to begin producing plastic toys in 1949 lego began producing among other new products an early version of the now familiar interlocking bricks calling them automatic binding bricks and they were based on the Kitty Craft self-locking bricks, which had been patented in the United Kingdom in 1939 and released in 1947. Uh, it received a sample of these Kitty Craft bricks from a supplier of an injection molding machine that it purchased. The bricks originally manufactured from cellulose acetate were a development of traditional stackable wooden blocks of the time. So there you go. A little bit of history of that's what Lego itself is. Yeah, I mean, Lego yeah. is like... A... <laughs> Lego is like kind of like Band Aid. It's one of those things where like even things that aren't Legos, like Mega blocks. My instinct is to call them Legos, right? Even if they're not like in my brain, my even if I'm like that's not a Lego, it looks nothing like a Lego. Yeah, like Mega Blocks. Yep. In my my brain, still my primal lizard brain goes, "Oop, Legos." My kid left Legos lying around. It's like no, they're not, <laughs> they're not Legos. There's like a we- it's like a weird dichotomy of like like all interlocking bricks are Legos, but then also you know a Lego if you grew up around Legos, you know a Lego when you see one, and you know what's mm-hmm. not a Lego, right? But I mean, Le- Lego even made like a whole bunch of different like spin off brands of things that are like even slightly different from their own. Uh, the one that comes immediately to mind is like the Bionicle brand where it's yep. all like it's way more like steampunk looking than just like the regular almost cartoony block bricks that we hmm. that we grew up with. The Bionicle came out and it was like, oh, it's like super steampunk and ninja. And but like they but I feel like they have a bunch of different other spinoff kind of brands. Yeah, there's like Ninjago and Lego yeah. City and. There's a whole bunch. Yeah, of, but even uh, those are still like the blocky, bricky, cartoony <laughs> ones. Like something about mm-hmm. the Bion- Bionicle. Bionicle was like a little different. Like it was more mm-hmm. about like a, it, yeah. But uh, part of the reason why Legos are awesome and why I wanted to like dedicate some time just talking about Legos themselves before talking about the games is um, Legos are one of those toys where it's like if your kid gets into Legos, I don't care how much it costs. You you feed him that. Like you feed them that. And the reason is because so many like architects that like are of our generation and the generation before us, they like cite Lego as like the inspiration for becoming architects or engineers Mm -hmm. or scientists, because like something about the, that kind there's like, there are, there are some toys and some things like that are, I mean, for the most part, all toys are just like, they're meant to just sort of entertain the kid and sure they're meant to inspire imaginative play, but there's like an upper ceiling to the amount that they can actually like teach your kid. Whereas Legos, that ceiling just blows up. Like, yeah, it's, it's that kind it's that rare toy. That's like the activity itself is educational and the activity itself is inspirational. And like, 
the things that people do with Legos are freaking incredible. And anybody, it's like, it's like not all kids are going to be incredible with Legos and not all kids are going to be inspired by Legos, but like Legos are one of the few toys that just the thing itself can, can, you know, unlock the genius in your kid's brain. And it's totally worth like just investing in. Now, granted, I'm, I'm saying within your means, I'm not saying go bankrupt right. on the gamble that your Some kids people do Lego genius. <laughs> I know they do, but at the same time, it's just like, don't like, please, please don't like, Oh, stupid kid. You're stupid. Lego toys. Like, right. Like I'm hoping none of our listeners who are parents are like that kind of parent anyways, but yeah, just don't, don't stifle that impulse, feed it and foster it as much as you can. And like, I think, I feel like that's the single greatest thing Lego has brought. I mean, yes, yeah. they're a big multi-billion dollar corporation, but I can't hate Lego too much because of what they've given to the world in the form of like children who go on to do incredible things. And now they have the Lego Mindstorms line, which is like, a, it's, it's way more expensive, but it's like robotics and computer programming. And so That's much awesome. so that my business, the, or not my, I don't own a business, sorry. The company I work <laughs> for, Simventions, had a developers conference offsite overnight we went and booked this whole place and they had at the beginning of this entire conference every group was given uh, a lego mindstorms set and a set of requirements and we were broke off into teams and we had to come up with a full powerpoint presentation uh plan and we had to actually build the robot to solve the the problem statement and present that at the end of the the weekend and it was all done through lego mindstorms and we're all full-blown adults with bachelor's uh-huh. degrees are higher and it was challenging and it was difficult and we did it and it created it it inspired a lot of innovation and all kinds of really cool things came out of that just from team building and that's all adults like and that's lego mindstorm so if you care about that like even introducing your child to stem uh science technology education yeah. and mm-hmm. mathematics great lego's awesome so and i, I that. hope that my like <clears throat> yeah I, I think i've been using just the gender the he gendered pronoun if your daughter is interested in legos or non-binary child is interested in legos i I, it doesn't care what the gender is like you you lego lego them i don't care if you have to buy like a bunch of pink barbie (laughs) legos whatever like like we need more women in stem anyways so like if lego is the thing that gets your daughter into stem like you buy as many barbie or my little pony legos is you i don't care how offended your masculinity or like toxic masculinity is like you dive headfirst into a pile of magenta legos for the sake of your child and the world <laughs> that needs her to be a brilliant scientist so anyways that's enough about no soapbox <laughs> of legos let's talk about video games when did lego get into the video game business uh when did they start making video games and what is kind of the history what are some of the like big hits of lego video games um, that kind of demonstrate the evolution over time. There's like a huge list, so I don't expect us to go through every single one. But like, yeah, let's it's talk good about to kind of find the, the starting point for sure. In 1997, yeah. the first Lego game was called Lego Island, which was developed and published by Mindscape. Henceforth, from them, from then, all Lego games were published by Lego Media. So that was the first one, and then there's a couple other spinoffs um, through the late 90s. Lego Chess, Lego Racers was developed by High Voltage, Lego Creator Knights Kingdom. Tales of Tahunga uh, was the first okay. Lego Bionicle game. Uh, and then Lego mm-hmm. Island 2, The Brixers Revenge, sequels, all kinds of cool things. Uh, it's been a long history, right? It's, what, 2022 now? And yeah, and they have 97. a mix, surprisingly, more than I thought, they have a mix of games that are like original. Well, it seemed like they had a lot more like their own, you know, Lego product, like their own Lego products in games, basically, like for you know the late 90s early 2000s and then it seems to have switched primarily to what it is now which is actually licensed products but like mm-hmm. if you look at their entire catalog it's actually a decent mixture of both right it's not just mm-hmm. like lego harry potter or lego star wars lego lord of the rings it's also like bionicle and racing games and builder games and stuff like that so that was actually an interesting surprise when i looked it up because i'm just so used to their licensed properties but yeah once And 2005 was a big year and a transition point for Lego. It's considered the most important year, actually, uh, was the revolutionary release of Lego Star Wars, the video game. It was the second multi-platform video game published by Lego. But the hype and reviews of the game were much higher than that of Bionicle. It was developed by Traveler's Tales. That's who, to this day, still makes Mm -hmm. all of these Lego games. That was the, the beginning of the modern era of Lego video games as we see now. Uh, It was the first Lego video game to gain that level of appreciation. Are they owned or they did this partner? To this partner well with, um, traveler's tales is a developer that has been given control of the lego ip got it got it got it, got it, got it. yeah okay yep mm-hmm. yep <clears throat> and so since then like we've gotten all of the <laughs> crazy 
very even so much as the toys to life like lego dimensions with the little scanner and the thing Uh that you could scan like the little minifigures in you know all the lego harry potters lego dc comic universe the lego marvel comic universe lego movie all of those games all developed by uh lego is what um we'll see yeah, Traveler's Tales. They, they did all of it. I'm trying to see if there's any other. There's TT, Traveler's Tales Fusion, EA, which is like a division of EA was involved. Yeah, they were yeah, publishers right. Go for, for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. yeah, no, I was just going to say, they were, I believe EA was publishers. I don't know if they still are or not, though. Oh, mm-hmm. Warner Brothers. No, Warner Brothers acquired Yeah, them. Warner Brothers now. And yeah. so now, yeah, now uh, WB Interactive Entertainment will be there doing publishing side of it. Well, Traveler's Tales is still doing the development Development and then presumably lego is doing the licensing like they're involved probably in the acquiring and managing of the licenses ips so there was even a lego mmo called the lego universe released by net devil and it was discontinued in 2012 i was gonna say i'm sure that was (laughs) yeah i'm sure that was uh, a successful one but i mean across all platforms like the ds the ps3 xbox 360 wii wii u ps2 was was when the first Lego Star Wars game came out in that era. And they actually have yeah, like, I mean, I feel like they should have just listed all of them. Plus the ones you wouldn't think of, like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. like Mac. And, uh, uh, oh gosh, I wouldn't be surprised. I, it's not on the list, but I wouldn't be surprised to see DOS show up on the list. It's not, but that would have been funny. Right. Yeah. Um, a little bit. Of I really little am little curious too, about the EA history with, with Lego. I got to mm-hmm. find that because it was interesting. Well, if you can find a little nugget while you're doing that, let's talk about what kinds of like what genres of games do Lego like what what are Lego games, right? Like when I think of Lego, I think of like building stuff. Um, more importantly, I think of building stuff and then knocking it down and watching it shatter into a you know cacophony of Lego pieces because I wasn't a very creative kid, but I was a very destructive kid. So I'd like to build stuff and then break it. Um, anyways, uh, so is like is, are that what Lego games are or are what kind of genres are they? They are every genre they've created. Like we just <laughs> mentioned, like there's even Minecraft, just build, build stuff games out mm-hmm. there with like yeah. themed sets. And that happened for a while. And then of course, now we have the Traveler's Tales games, which are mostly action adventure, puzzle solving platformers, platformers where yep. there's like combat. It's all third person. You can like mash buttons for combat. You can do different abilities with like bringing up an ability wheels, like different stuff and different characters fall into different types, character archetypes. So you have like, this character so Legos then things. just it's sort like, of yeah, and they just sort of um, the Lego component just sort of like replaces the assets, right? So instead of having to do laser blasts, you do the little Lego. They program the little Lego bricks and coins yep. in the game. Currency are just like the or Lego studs. coins, and yep. yeah, when people die, when enemies die, they they shatter into a bunch of Lego bricks instead of all the things that video games are accused rightly of in regards to uh, portraying character deaths. Yeah, I mean, but you're like the, the racer games, um, you know, the Bionicle games are, again, that was more of sort of like a middle school, targeting middle school, maybe early high school, late elementary school range kids where it was trying to go for like the grittier, darker uh, Legos. And uh, those have their own flavor and feel to them, but they're all like like action adventure games. So um, and then you said that, yeah, on the MMO. So, uh, yeah, they got they got a lot a lot of different genres. Lego works seems to work pretty well for a bunch of different genres. So. Well, then let's talk about the weird elephant in the room as far as I'm concerned. If you were to say, give me a list of the top 10 most popular IPs, intellectual properties in the world, um, I would guarantee you that like Star Wars, Batman, Lord of the Rings, Avengers, uh, Harry Potter, they would all be on that list. Maybe not so much in the last couple of years of Harry Potter, but like, yeah, there were, those are like big, big big um, ips how does lego get access to all these intellectual properties that they can just make you know the star wars game that's that seems kind of insane to me you don't see any other like company doing that what, what what's the deal there would you know do you have uh, any idea what the deal is there i, I have an answer but i figured if you've done that i know that well. like for lego indiana jones and lego star wars there was lucas arts was involved back in 2007 Mm-hmm. So like Lego Star Wars, the complete saga was right, released by still, Lucas yeah. Arts. And so oh, gotcha. and, and Warner Brothers Interactive, of course, taking over acquired Traveler's Tales back in 2007. So WB Games mm-hmm. became the official publisher. So everything under the WB umbrella, that's DC, right? Mm-hmm. So the, all the, yep. at least the, the IP from DC and their agreement with Warner Brothers allows them it's to also do Harry all Potter that. and Lord of the No, not Lord of the Rings. I don't know who owns Lord of the Rings. 
I don't either. Is it MGM? No, I think it's um wow, Legendary Picture? No. Not Legendary no. Pictures. Who is it? It's New Line. New Fun Line. New Line it. Cinema. I think New Line Maybe. Cinema. Maybe. They're the ones that at least made Peter Jackson's original trilogy. I have no gotcha. idea about The Hobbit. doesn't matter. Yeah. Who knows who that media conglomerate. New Line's probably a part of Warner Brothers for all I know. The, the So apparently, so Lego, you know, we talked, this thing's been huge since, you know, this thing was huge before it even made the like plastic bricks. And since then it's blown up to massive proportions. My understanding based on the little bit of Googling I did was that like Lego is so big that like IPs, you know, Disney will come to them and be like, hey, can you make a Lego Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> like Whoa. set, right? And that's just for their sets, right? Now, granted, sometimes Lego does it in reverse. Lego actually has like, they get a lot of online feedback these days and like figure out what the Lego fans want, what kind of sets they want. And then if it matches up with their vision, then they'll do it. So Lego doesn't just adapt. As much as we would love to see Lego Dark Souls or Lego... Um, Half Life that would probably wouldn't fly because Lego actually seeks out like a certain level of like violence, right? Is like too much for them, right? Uh, yeah, and obviously right. no sexual themes or anything like that. Like they typically mm -hmm. avoid all of that. So no, like Lego Grand Theft Auto sets are likely to show up in the future. Um, you're not going to be able to crush Lego hookers with a um, a, a semi auto semi truck, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. Uh, oh gosh, now I've derailed because that thought's so funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sometimes they'll be like, oh, the fans want this. Hey, it's not something that's too terribly like violent or anything. It doesn't offend any of our sensibilities. Uh, let's go approach them. But that seems to, it almost often, more often seems to happen in the other direction where like they will be approached by. So like their brand is that big. So I don't know what kind, there's got to be a bunch of legal and stuff like oh, of that. Course. Like, you know, yeah. like, oh, you can make Lego sets, but you can't take those intellectual properties and make video games out of them. So I'm certain there's like some give and take where they're like, hey, what you, what the, you said their name a bunch of times. What's the developer again? Traveler's Tales? Travelers, I want to say Telltale. I'm like, it's not Telltale. Travelers, it is, yeah, it's Traveler hard. Tales might be like games is the abbreviation. Exactly Travelers, right. Yeah, yeah. Traveler Tales might be like, hey, we want to do this property, and then they have to go be like, okay, are we allowed to do that? Do we have to get like an agreement or whatever? But nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that like the answer to how they get these IPs is that like the IPs themselves seem to come to them. But I mean, think about it. Like Lego's huge. Of course, you're like, if Lego's willing to make a set based on your IP, like you're gonna get so much just incredible marketing and those deals it's probably like millions of dollars of deals here so then you know these games are no slouches either so making a lego star wars game is probably an honor and also lucrative for disney right so yep. it's, it's it's a mutually beneficial relationship i think that they have and that's why it's so successful but like man my jaw dropped at some of the characters they had in the lego movie when I watched it, I was like, are you kidding me? How? How is that possible? Yeah. So and I wonder if there's like the the IP agreements, if you will, under the Lego umbrella are just like allowed to be used by Lego. Right. I as long as what we portray those... them as Legos, right? Like as yeah. long as we, you know, we can do Superman all day as long as he's a Lego Superman. because Without having to reach agreement? back to DC and like get a I don't know how that works. Yep. I'm sure there's... I Probably contract mods like and like yeah. all these things, like written NDAs and whatever, like like crazy. But the well, IP. But if you're Lego, you have the like, you know, it's like we're not talking about like a little small business trying to like do business exactly. with the big fellows. Like these are giants, and this those meetings probably are like fifty lawyers, like twenty five on one side for Lego, twenty five on one side for the other, and they're all sitting there noodling over this stuff. But that said, Lego has pull. Like Lego yep. could just be like, we're not gonna make your Star Wars set then, and Star. Whoa, whoa, hold on! No one's saying that. <laughs> no one's mm -hmm. saying that. <laughs> you know, like that's probably exactly like Lego probably has the pull to be like, all right, you got to give us free like use of these characters as we see fit, as long as we depict them as Legos and not try to like pretend like we're blah blah blah. So yep. I don't know. That's a. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think they do have like the kind of weight to do that. So I think so. I'd be interested to see like if I, I I want like a tour of Lego, but like not Lego's actual like facilities. I want like give me the the, the business tour of Lego. How do you do what you do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be yeah, great. Yeah. And super cool. fascinating. I bet. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably has a few skeletons. I wouldn't be surprised to find Lego has a few like shady things they've done. Yeah. Uh, Probably. In the name of advancing their product. But uh, that's what it is. And I wonder now, are they like still Danish based? Like. Or do they like, is their head like, are there, are their board of directors like 
Danish folk or are they Americans? I have no idea. Well, cool. Let's talk about your personal relationship with Lego. What are your favorite Lego games or memories Ooh. with Legos? Anything like that? I, yeah, I don't, so, can't really speak to the Lego games because I've never played any of them. But Since uh, Ryan, friend of the show, listens to us, if he's listening, my stint with Lego games is closely tied to him. Uh, it started with my own experience of Lego Star Wars, the complete saga on the Xbox 360, where I fell in love with and 100 percented that game. And then after that, Ryan and I made a creed to like, we're going to only play. We're playing every Lego game that comes out together and we're not going to play it on our own. We're going to co-op it because the co-op split screen was so much fun. It lasted oh, years yeah. and we played <laughs> many of them. We didn't 100 percent all of them, but like Lego Batman, Lego Indiana Jones, Lego Harry Potter, Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. I think all of those uh, games we had played together. It was a long it's stint over work. over several. Yeah, and we we would just get together and we'd get Taco Bell and drinks and play Lego games oh, for hours. Taco Bell. Uh, so I bad, often man. would fall asleep trying to play, and then once the puzzles fell apart, it was hilarious. Um, but of course, marriage and well, yeah, I guess for both of us, marriage and then kids and responsibilities kind of we kind of drifted apart. I actually fell off of Lego because be- because it did become an annualized franchise. It kind of got exhausting. And I think the last, the newest one that I had played was uh, Lego Harry Potter. After that was like Lego Hobbit and Lego Lord of the Rings. Uh, And there was probably like Lego Batman 2 and Lego DC Universe. Uh, And I didn't really pick one up again until the newest generation at the time, 2013, when the PS4 generation hit. There was a Lego Marvel Super Heroes that I got for PS4. And so I almost 100%ed that. I'm still, I'm actually still working on it and have in the, like in my backlog, Lego avengers and lego marvel superheroes 2 which were like higher quality games and then i've gone back and played lego star wars episode 7 which was force awakens when it had come out and there hasn't been a lego star wars game since um until now with lego star wars, star wars skywalker saga which i can't wait to get into and i'll probably buy it as soon as i finish what i have on my plate and jump into that immediately so i've got a big history with lego games i love them uh, I adore, I love, the humor is great. They retell the stories from like movies in hilarious ways, stuff you wouldn't even yeah, expect. Yeah, Lego, yeah, that's uh, that's been like a surprising, like Lego's writing team for their stuff now is like awesome. Like they've got mm-hmm. to have some good comedy writers on their staff because they've, they've done some pretty funny. I just, I haven't seen the second Lego movie and I haven't played any of these games, but like my experience with them so far has been like, oh yeah, they're they're funny as heck so they are yep good stuff. and i would love a chance to go play any lego game with ryan again that would be awesome because it would be super uh, nostalgic yeah it'd be a lot of fun suck to have kids and get married and, and move two hours away things ever again <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just looking forward to when our kids are like high schoolers and then we can like have fun again like right they can take care of themselves me too the most part. they can uh, do their own thing wait. Yeah. Like you'll still worry about them and stress about them, but like you'll get your game time back. You can stay up till three again playing games with folks and you can take a day off work don't... and it's like you a day off. Want... Yeah, it's exactly. an actual day off. <laughs> exactly. You're like your weekends are yours again and you can actually get yes. up whenever you want and like have coffee like, outside hey, on, the, kids, on a porch. We're going to go to this brewery, have fun with the house to yourselves and even that better, is a even better beneficial penguin. arrangement, even better. You have your 16, 17 or 18 year old child drive you to the brewery and schedule oh, them to nice. come pick you up and use that as a trust establishment if I can oh, trust man. you, child, to drive on your own and pick me up here at 10 p.m. and you're here on time, then you are free to drink and have fun and revel in, with your friends and not have to worry about a ride because your trusted 18-year-old will pick you up on time and get you home. They establish oh, trust oh. with you. <laughs> And like, yeah, yes. I thought. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the kids going and drinking. And <laughs> oh no, 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 no! no. They drop like, you off wait, and they pick you up. Year olds? No, yeah, because yeah, it no, comes across you, like that. if you're a parent and you're like, "Hey, I'm gonna get my 18 year old to drive me to a brewery." No, you're actually setting them up for a trust building exercise where then they can continue to build that currency, quote unquote, with you. Wow, you've so thought that- a lot about this. You have no idea how desperate I want to not have to wake up in the morning. Hope, and, you're making some assumptions like, about your kids' trustworthiness when they're teenagers. Mm, you better hope I, that I know. they're like those I rare, I, I super so. well-behaved, lame kids, straight-edge, mm-hmm. boring I'm kids. I'm so six I say years. that having been one. I was six one of those straight-edge, boring kids that didn't get I was in trouble. Too. So yeah, like, me too. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not casting aspersions here. I'm, I'm one yep. of those kids. I felt boring, <laughs> though. I, was, I felt boring. That's all. So, like, yep. 
Yeah. I have a six year old yeah. and a two year old. So it's been six years of little kid phase where every oh, yeah, single man, morning just... you wake up to either a crying child or a hungry child. You don't have any time for yourself ever. And it's exhausting. And I My love kid them. has been They're waking me up the last and... few months or so with a song that he says that he'll get in the bed cute. and he'll start jumping on me and he'll go. <laughs> this is the song he <laughs> sings to wake me up. He goes, don't wake up. Go back to sleep. Growing up, waking <laughs> up, growing up, waking up. Like, and he's three. He is so. your child. That is something is, you would do. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's pretty funny, but at the same time, it's not funny at 7 a.m. And I'm like, mm, I'm also not a morning person, so that doesn't help. But yep. um, Cool. Well, uh, wow, that was, a, again, a long, long tangent. Ten, long tangent. Let's wrap up then and just say, why do you think Lego and video games are a good fit? And are here's just a genuine question. Are, are Lego games popular? Why do they keep getting, you know, why do they keep getting made? Are, are like, are they popular? Who are they popular with? Let's answer kind of all those questions. Um, I would say Lego and video games uh, are actually a really natural fit. If you look at the games that have been successful, like the big, big games, the games that are like, these are the money makers over the last 10 years. The two that come to mind are Minecraft and Fortnite, both of which have massive building components. Like mm -hmm. Nintendo is on the record of saying that they're, they, they kind of kick themselves for not having come up with the idea for Minecraft before Minecraft did. Yeah. I feel like Lego is, should also be kicking themselves for that same thing. Like if Minecraft, it, there's a parallel universe out there where like, the creators of Minecraft approached Lego with this idea. Lego loved it. And then like Minecraft was just Lego, like Lego craft, right? Like there's a parallel universe out there where that happened. And it's just Lego is now like Disney level God corporation in that universe, because like, it's just, it would have been such a natural fit for those two video games. So like, yeah, like I think the idea of Lego and the idea of video games are so good together that I'm genuinely surprised that Lego games are not like more, I guess, critically successful than they are. Like I'm genuinely confused as to why they're not quote more popular. Like, why am I not lining up for the game of the year Lego game that just came out? Right. Like, mm -hmm. like that's that I'm genuinely curious. Cause they just, they do see, it seems like Lego can't go wrong. So yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, of course I am termite. So I looked up the best selling Lego games ranked by sales numbers uh, and you can put them into context. So the best-selling single Lego video game is Lego Batman, which was released in 2008, <laughs> and it sold 12 million copies. In second place was Lego Indiana Jones, which sold 11 million copies. Now, the reason wow. why you can put that into context is because Dark Souls 3, yeah, yep. which I, I knew people... exactly where you are going to go with that, <laughs> <laughs> sold around... The same, I believe, as the yeah, best-selling yeah. since Dark Elden Ring. Sell less than that. What about Batman? What about the actual Batman games, like Arkham, Arkham Asylum? Just Arkham Asylum or Arkham City? Like uh, how Arkham would they Asylum sell and compare sales. and compared to Lego Batman? Uh, nine point five million copies sold of Arkham. Oh Asylum. my gosh, are you yeah. kidding? So Lego Batman sold more than Batman Arkham Asylum, one of the most highly regarded Batman games of all time. Yes, got outsold. Mm -hmm. What's going on? <laughs> Explain yeah. it to me, Termite. Uh, I mean, so it's Lego. It's, it's kids. It's the kid factor, yeah. and it's and yeah. it's multi-platform. So it's for every. There was a port of Lego Batman on mobile devices, on DS, on your Wii, Wii U, PS2, PS3, Xbox 360. Uh, I believe there was one for the original Xbox. They were like cross generation. Those early Lego games were cross generation, even. So it just was everywhere. If you had a console that could play video games, of course, PC, you can get Lego Batman. And it's Batman, which every kid just comes out of the womb knowing who Batman is. I don't understand <laughs> yeah, it. Right. It's like, it makes total <laughs> sense. But uh, even like, I was really surprised about Lego Indiana Jones because that's kind of an older movie. It's considered retro. A lot of like, it's there hasn't been a new entry in that movie franchise since Shia LaBeouf's ab abysmal like whatever Crystal Skull thing that was. Um, Have you, um, and I love how you associate Shia LaBeouf with that, despite the fact that like Steven Spielberg did that movie and George Lucas they did that movie. They're just not sitting here being like, but you you're pinning it on Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> yeah, he's part of it. And bad writing was the rest of it, but you know, no, it, it was, was all bad, bad writing on George Lucas. Yeah. George Lucas has not written a good thing since Return of the Jedi, like period. So stop. Well, he has stopped. Well, he has go. retired. Okay. But yeah. Uh, and then in yeah. third place was Lego Star Wars, which makes sense, but that's only seven million copies. So whereas, like, I guess 
Lego makes enough sales to be worth the annualized franchise deal situation going on. They are multi-platform. They have the kid thing. They have one every year. It's a good Christmas gift. It's a good birthday gift. Yeah, they're not, and they're not, they aren't good games. You know, we're comparing it to, you know, in direct comparison to some of the games that are like highly regarded regarded in their genre. It it is, that's one thing, but like all these reasons that you're saying, like those markets, that sellability, like, yeah, of course it sold more than Dark Souls because like, you can't sell Dark Souls to kids. You right. can sell Lego to kids. If you had Lego right. Dark Souls, you bet it would be. Uh, it would be kids would be eating it up probably. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, it's Daddy's favorite game, except with Legos instead. Um, right, and Dad's going to be involved. Like the parents get exactly. excited about it because yep. they are yep. they're good enough to be like gamer friendly. Sure, so fun. I mean, they're Ryan like and I were playing yeah. them as yes. Uh, you just comfort food. You just jump in. It's a super fun platforming game with puzzles. The gameplay makes sense. They're not mostly not buggy janky messes like they they play well they're funny they're relatable to adults they're super entertaining children so it just makes sense like boom 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 yeah, pop sure. out like, every year. i mean and if you look at like there's there is not a direct correlation to like critical reception quote unquote good games and sales like if you were if, if the best games were also the best selling games then call of duty would get game of the year every year right so that's there is not a direct correlation to that so but still it is surprise i think it's it is it was this when you break it down, it's like, oh, it makes sense. But it was also kind of a surprising thing to be like, yeah, I almost wrote this. Why are Lego games not more popular? And then I realized, wait a minute, Lego games are actually probably really popular. And I just they I, they're not popular to me, my circles, my right. discourse. So I actually ended up thinking about this question. I literally thought, what's term I going to say? He's going to say they are popular, you idiot. Uh, and list all the reasons <laughs> why. So I yep. reworded the question. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's why they're popular. So, all right. Well, final yeah. thoughts. Then, what do you think? Uh, as always, we like to look towards the future. What would you like to see? What would get you stoked on Lego games? Uh, I think because I haven't played Skywalker Saga yet, Skywalker Saga yet, and what little bit of research I did on their engines, I was I would say to answer this question, an engine overhaul would be super beneficial. It seemed like there's been a long time they've been trying to rehash the same engine over and over again. It was the next-gen sub-engine when developing LEGO Indian Jones 2, which I do remember an actual, like, line in the sand between all the previous lego games which were like lego star wars indiana jones one lego batman uh and then lego indiana jones 2 had come out and i was like this is different like there was a point where like you if you played co-op and you separated it it used to block you into the same screen kind of like legends did back in the day where you have to like Mm -hmm. the characters can only go to the edges of the screen this lego game like opted to an automatic split screen situation based on where you were. And so if you came together, the screen would not split. But when you did walk apart, anyway, I say it needs a new engine. There was some bugs. Like some it was a good jump forward, but now right. it needs another. And that was yeah, a long time ago. I mean, that was, yeah. uh, it was, that was a PlayStation two game as well. Lego like Indiana wow. Jones to do across generation. So since then, like I could see where they're trying to do like with, um, with Lego star Wars, the force awakens, they were trying to do like this over the shoulder third person cover based shooter combat mechanic. And I thought that was kind of shoehorned in. I was like, it, it does, it works like they've done it well, but it wasn't what this engine could support. And so you can Ooh. see a lot of like, and they're also trying to do a lot of flight and vehicle things going on that would fall apart pretty quickly. And, and with like Lego Marvel, there was a lot of superhero flying through the sky and like hub worlds that could like branch off into smaller. There was this giant hub world, which was new instead of like a menu based jump into a level. It was like, now there's this whole hub world thing. And I, I just felt like it was getting too big. They were growing the scale too much and it, they just needed to like stop and reassess everything. And I think that's what they did with the Skywalker saga. It's the first game in their new NTT, which is pronounced entity engine. It's a custom built engine Uh and it's actually being developed using unreal. So unreal is like, nice. I was going to say unreal five for, I mean, I know it's just came out like officially came out though. I'm sure developers have had like the kits for a while that said, yeah, Unreal, like a Lego game made with Unreal 5 would probably be really cool just because of what that thing's capable of with all the like mm-hmm. individual particle effects. You could get really tiny Lego bricks and do really cool things with them, I think. Um, yep. So, yeah, I think it. I just, would like to, yeah. I, yeah, I think I would like, to, honestly, I would like to see them get away from, I would like to see them get away from uh, licensed movie properties. Um, the reason is because I just, I do feel like, even if they're like, they're good versions of those licensed products, I still feel like there's sort of a video game stigma towards 
movies and you know what would get me and probably like the vast majority of the video game community super stoked on lego games uh is Mm -hmm. if they dropped a lego mario game because as you mentioned there's already a lego mario set uh so that they've partnered together in the past and mario has also been incredibly successful with like completely changing the like style you know paper Mm -hmm. mario mario rpg all like completely changing what a mario game is yeah so like a mario lego game would just be like blow my mind uh with how awesome that would be so i'm like go like video games are bigger than movies now anyways they're a billion dollar enterprise like um i know that there's a lot of video games that wouldn't meet lego's kind of morality standards but there's plenty that do. So mm-hmm. like, I think that if they were to partner with more video games and get allowing, um, allowing TT games, <laughs> there you go. Uh, traveler sales, allowing traveler sales to get access to a bunch of assets that, um, that they're probably like, would be stoked to also work with and bring out the passion in them. Um, I feel like that's what Lego Legos creators, whether they're movies or video games, like the people who make Legos are the kinds of people that are like, I'm so excited. I'm passionate about this IP. I'm just excited to get my hands on it. And you can see how that passion comes through in their work, like in the Lego movie and in all the, just the Lego sets themselves. Mm-hmm. They're so creative with what they do with those products and what they f- make fit and make work. I would love to see them be able to get their hands on to do that with video games like Lego mm-hmm. Final Fantasy, Lego Zelda, Lego. Yeah. And they already have games that they could pull from for gameplay mechanics, right? Like they don't have mm-hmm. to try to like, turn star wars into a video game like there's already video games for these video games and so they can just riff off of that they don't i'm not saying they have to make it a turn-based combat thing but they could have elements of turn-based combat to make it like fun and a fun homage and they could make poke fun at it it's everything it's just i feel like it's begging there's so many properties out there that are begging for the lego treatment and i believe there are so many properties even if it's not nintendo there are plenty of properties plenty of companies that would work with lego willingly and joyfully um, to because 12 million 12 million copies sold of a movie based licensed video game well, just because it was lego right not technically correct the lego batman one and two and lego dc stuff was all not movie related like that didn't right. follow well, a plot was... of a movie it was just lego and then lego marvel no, but they were pulling their imagery from the cartoons though weren't they like from the animated series i feel like all the look of the lego characters are like the animated. Yeah, maybe yeah uh, yeah, I, I, the animated I series pulled from the comics so it's all derived but yeah there's like the og content og being not related to a movie lego marvel superheroes one and two and lego batman one and two and lego dc supervillains were all like original ip sure. as far okay, as the well. story but so it's you're not entirely wrong i get what you're saying you're not wrong but not every single lego game was based on a yes. movie most yes, of yes. them are so you're not wrong right. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah well that's what i'm saying like like I, there's a there's a weird like I I do think that 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 movie IP fixation is actually ironically holding them back, despite the fact that they're like kind of redeeming movie adaptations of uh, of like video game movie adaptations. Because, you know, for context, like the mid 2000s just had so many video game tie ins for movies that were just abysmal. There are some like gems like Spider-Man 2, but for the most part, they're just abysmal. And so just there's a people my age have a bad taste. Any video game that's made based off of a movie, it's just like, nah. There was a I know I don't lie. I'm not lying. There's a Super Nintendo game of home improvement. What the wow. Yes. (laughs) That's Madeline's home improvement. So there you go. Like literally games for almost every TV and movie yeah. out there yeah yeah it was bad nuts it was bad yeah, and, most, and most of it is hot garbage so it's yeah. just like so that's what that's what i'm saying like if lego were t- tomorrow to announce a lego mario game I, it would blow my mind and i would like buy it <laughs> like, yeah. like I, I will buy this yes uh so anyways that's my thoughts well we want to hear your thoughts good listeners we want to hear your lego ideas you know what what lego games would you like to see what lego sets would you like to see off of games as we mentioned our dlc um what do you think about lego do you love lego do you hate lego because you have stepped on just one too many lego bricks that your kids left lying around uh which is one of the like top 10 pains in the world we want to hear it all everything you can think of about lego and termite's going to remind you where you can share those ideas if you have them you can express your frustration why there's a lego 
what are they called? The Incredibles. There's a Lego Incredibles uh, video yeah. game and not Lego Toy Story at 80bitpodsmash.com because you can find links to our social media outlets there and rant with me about why there's not a Lego Toy Story game out there when there's four movies to, to get an entire story from and they're hilarious. We need that in our life. And you can go to 80bitpodsmash.com to find us and talk all about it there as well as links to our podcast platforms again if you're coming by way of twitch or youtube or however you find us uh we have our podcast that launches every monday at midnight eastern either daylight savings or standard time depending on what time of year it is but midnights on mondays all 80bitpodsmash.com that's that's where you'll find links to all of the information you need uh, yeah that is that is weird i feel like if they're gonna do a St- skywalker saga where they do like three whole movies worth or no nine whole movies worth nine. of it's the biggest one yet content yeah. Yep. Uh, then, like, yeah, four Toy Story movies would be a shoe in. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, next week we're going to be talking about beta testing. We've actually, I, I think we've Ooh. had uh, had this one in our back pocket for a while. I don't remember which one of us put it forward, but we're, basically we're going to be talking about like, like the, the the idea of beta testing, the idea of releasing a game early to the public for testing. So whether that's in the form of a network test, a stress test, or an actual quote beta. You know, available only to people who pre-purchase it or open to the public. There's so many different ways beta tests have been done um, that we want to kind of talk about it and talk about what works, what doesn't work, and why it can be such a hotbed issue. So you have that to look forward to next week. So with that, we will see you next week. <laughs>